Icefall mantles are nothing more than just a meme, right? It's charged with light this time, dude. Okay, let's see if it. Oh, if it I kills. was charged. Yeah. Nope. No! What if I told you that without a super, I could survive a sniper rifle headshot, two body shots from an arbalist, a golden gun body shot, most of the hunter's heavy attacks from their roaming supers, eight rounds from a high impact hand cannon, a 120 hand cannon, a freaking rocket launcher, as well as many, many more things in PVP. Hi, my name is Musin777 and I am a crucible mad scientist. While I was working on a vaccine for ape brain syndrome, I have discovered what is effectively super levels of damage resistance roughly on an 11 second cooldown. How? Am I hacking the game? Have we found the next exploit that gets trials canceled? Have you or a loved one been diagnosed with mesothelioma? All very rational questions to ask, and the answer to all of those is no, there's nothing here that is unintentional. This is all very intentionally designed things on Bungie's side. What we've done is instead of trying to design a Titan that focuses on sliding the length of a football field to shotgun somebody in the shins, we have slapped on the ice ball mantles and have become a very, very, very chonky boy. And I want to tell you about it. Maybe. I, I'm not sure. I'm honestly terrified to see if this gets really popular, but nevertheless, I think that this would be a great way to shut down some aggression right now. And before I do that, as, as per my contract with YouTube or else they will try to send assassins to kill me, I have to plug, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a lot. It allows us to make more stuff like this, as well as if you want to see us take this build into a really non-serious environment and try to just do some absolutely cruel and hilarious things to Guardians, go check out our second channel. I'll leave a link in the description as well as the pinned comment. Okay. First of all, what subclass are we running? Obviously, we are running the Behemoth Titan, but the first thing I want to point out is that we are not running the Cryoclasm. We are instead running the Howl of the Storm and the Tectonic Harvest. Tectonic Harvest allowing us to get melee energy whenever we shatter a Stasis Crystal, and the Howl of the Storm is essentially like a replacement for our melee ability, where after we slide, if we press our melee button, it will summon Stasis Crystals, which will freeze targets and just generally leave crystals around. We're also running the Glacier Grenade, which is just more Stasis Crystals around the map, which is great for what we're going to be doing here. For our fragments, we are running the Whisper of Chains. This is a relatively new fragment, so you might not have had it yet. If you haven't picked it up, definitely go put some effort in getting this thing, because damn is it effective. What it allows you to do is while you are standing near one of your stasis crystals, it gives you a 25% damage resistance. Now you're starting to see some of the nastiness. Between what we can do with our melee as well as our grenade, we're capable of getting this 25% damage resistance up relatively frequently. But we don't like to stop there. We are a glutton for pain and we're slightly masochistic and we also run the Whispers of Torments. You gain grenade energy each time you take damage from combatants. And this is just every time. There's no set amount that it'll give you if you take more damage, let's say from a sniper rifle body shot. Essentially, if you take any damage whatsoever, it has a very slight cooldown. I'd say like a second and a half, it will give you a small bump in grenade energy. I'll say roughly five, maybe 10%, somewhere around there. Furthering this idea, we are running the Whisper of Refraction, which allows us to get class ability energy when we kill slowed or frozen targets, as well as we are running Whisper of Shards, which gives us grenade energy whenever we shatter a stasis crystal. All of these combined by themselves are quite good and quite effective. Being able to get a 25% damage resistance relatively frequently is pretty damn strong. But we don't just stop there. No, we take things to an unhealthy extreme and we slap on, like I mentioned, the Icefall Mantles. Now, these things have been laughed at for a very long time for being generally too much of a trade-off or not enough benefit, and it's understandable. These things by themselves don't really warrant the use, as what they do is they replace your barricade with a 100 health overshield. While you are in this overshield, you can't sprint, you can't burst glide. With this extra 100 health, we have a sum total of 300 health. If you add a 25% damage resistance on top of that, it effectively gives you 50% damage resistance to a 200 health guardian. And to make this even worse, I am running 100 resilience. I am running absolute 
maximum of maximum resilience. Now, just max resilience alone is actually pretty good to run right now, because it allows you to do is to survive a headshot body body from a 120 hand cannon. With the ice fall mantles just by themselves and having 100 resilience, you can survive a headshot from a rapid fire sniper rifle as well as a few other things, but just those by themselves are pretty damn good. But when you add that plus 25 damage resistance on top of that, you suddenly become the chonkiest thing that has ever existed on planet Earth. But of course, you've got to find a way to take advantage of being slower than Internet Explorer. So we've dug up in our vault one of our old favorite weapons, the Sweet Business. I absolutely love the Sweet Business and holy damn is it effective in this build. The Sweet Business is an excellent way to introduce enemies to 150 rounds of high velocity lead poisoning in a very, very easy and consistent manner. If you're unfamiliar with how Sweet Business works or perhaps you don't ha quite have your hands on it yet and you're working your way towards actually getting this build, what the Sweet Business does is that it starts off very slow and the damage is very, very poor. But the longer you hold the trigger, it continues to ramp up its rate of fire until it maxes out at, I believe, 900 RPM or 1000 RPM, essentially spitting out bullets like a freaking AC-130. When it's fully spun up, the TTK on the sweet business is 0.8 seconds to the body and 0.6 seconds to the head. Now, for perspective, a 120 hand cannon, which is by far the most popular hand cannon right now, is a one second. So you have 0.2 seconds of just straight up, just the sweet business alone when it's fully spun up of a TTK advantage over the most popular primary weapon right now. Surprisingly, a lot of Guardians will try to... I, for whatever reason, challenge this thing when it is fully spun up. So you will find guardians who will try to take you on despite it being a very poor idea, and they will die for it almost every single time. Here's the general flow of how to make this thing really, really come alive. First of all, you need to do what we call the Kool-Aid Man combo. You throw down your stasis glacier grenade in an area where your opponents are. All you want to do while those stasis crystals are active and you're roughly right behind them, slap down your ice fall mantle barricade. Get that 100 over shield and then begin to spin up your weapon. Interestingly, ice fall mantles, just as a little tip, ice fall mantles will keep you in third person for a little bit longer, even though you have control of your character. So you'll be able to start spinning up the sweet business before you get back into first person. Shoot your ice crystal wall with your sweet business. Break one of the ice crystals. This will not only give you a hole to shoot through, which we will then start to abuse, this will also trigger some of that just passive abilities that we have within our stasis subclass, particularly getting our grenade energy back and our melee energy back off of tectonic harvest, as well as the whisper of shards. Now that you've made yourself a nice little peaky hole, continue to hold down the trigger and challenge, just straight challenge, absolutely everything that isn't in absolutely maximum long range. You will be able to survive damn near everything in close range. We've tested this with Felwinter's shotgun in a melee. We've tested this with like a high impact fusion rifle. The only things that really, really tear this thing apart are the things that normally kill supers. Like, like I mentioned, you basically have a super, so act like it. With the sweet business completely spun up, you will be able to chew through damn near everything in PvP. There are very, very, very few things that have a similar TTK as a fully spun up sweet business. If you can get multiple kills with this sweet business, you will then be able to pop a orb of light if you have the catalyst like I do, which will, if you are running the same build that I am running here, I am actually running recuperation over running a scavenger for my fusion rifle. I do run a backup plan fusion rifle, but I don't hardly ever use it. If you are able to pick up that orb of light from the sweet business double kill, you'll be able to get your health back and continue the rampage. Another thing you can do, which I highly recommend, is you can also run charge of light with this. Run taking charge, which gives you a charge of light whenever you pick up an orb and run high energy fire to just give yourself a generic plus 20% to your just general weapon damage. All of this in combination makes you an absolute menace on the battlefield. And the biggest thing that I think most Guardians are struggling with when I take this against them is they have no freaking idea how to deal with it. Nobody knows how to handle this right now. Nobody is expecting a Titan to just have just effectively 50% damage resistance per every single engagement. If you're a fan of the channel, you'll know what this means. This is a gamma build. This is very much a team support style of build. If you can get your team to play around you, the better. It helps out tremendously because you'll be drawing the aggro of the, the majority of the enemy team and your team can go through and clean up. It is incredibly effective. 
Destiny needs a little bit of variety right now. It is getting really old, getting rushed with shotguns, and this is just the purest form of no you I have ever come up with and it is so much fun. I am giggling like a schoolgirl every time I take this thing out because of how freaking effective this is. Subscribe, share this around, bless your faces, and deuces.